You don't take anything away from Andy because Andy has proven time and time again. that he's one of the best fighters in the world. And he's proven from time and time again that he is one of the top K1 fighters. And the other top fighters pretty much made it, made K1 it is today. But like everybody, everybody knows that from the beginning, Andy was Mr. K1 and he's gone. Dear viewers, welcome to an exciting journey to the world of incredible fights and amazing moments in kickboxing. Today we present to you a unique video dedicated to one of the greatest athletes in this sport, Andreas Andy Hook. This remarkable Swiss kickboxer became a true legend of his time thanks to his unmatched mastery and uncompromising fighting spirit. In this video, we will dive into one of the most spectacular battles of Andreas Hook. The best moments when his unique technique and energy led to astonishing outcomes in the ring. Every knockout, every brawl is not just a demonstration of strength and mastery, but a story of persistence and passion that brought Hook to the top of glory. Get comfortable in your seats as you're about to go on a mesmerizing journey through incredible moments of sports history in the world of knockouts and battles of the great blue-eyed samurai. Andy Hook, Patrick Smith Far 1994, that fateful night when the blue eyes of our samurai rolled back from shots to the head from Patrick Smith. On that night, Andy Hook's legs gave up on the K1 ring three times. Axe kick, miss, and right hand to the skull. The judges had to count. It seemed like Andy didn't really get what happened. If Andreas fan knew what would happen next, I think they would have rushed straight to the ring not to let Patrick realize his intentions. Patrick throws himself at the Swiss fighter, a combination of thunder strikes to Hook's head. The referee counts a knockdown for a second time, but Smith knocks out Samurai again with a cheap shot. This telling moment really shows us what a spirit was hidden under Andre's skin, because Andy took even lesser loss like a true warrior. What's left for us is to watch how Hook goes backstage. You might ask me like, this is a video about Andy, not Patrick, what's the catch? Like did you really want to show me how my idol got folded in a sneaky way? No guys, it's just a setup for a sweet revenge. Five months after three knockdowns in a row, K1 tournament with a telling title, Revenge. I kinda like these 90 tournaments, atmosphere, spirit and hardcore. Exactly these three words perfectly describe this time, even this rare and vintage footage. A real Mortal Kombat guys? Revenge. Andy Hug versus Patrick Smith. I won't make you wait too long guys, from the ship straight to the ball. Smith is charged up, if only one knew with what and which quantity while Andy is cool as a cucumber. Bell, fight! Patrick wants to repeat that axe kick again, but Andreas sweeps the American. What up Patrick? Ref tries to explain something to the fighters that are ready to kill in the ring. Patrick flies with a front kick, Andreas covers up, and Smith wants to take the fight with pressure. Head kick from Andy, but Patrick doesn't stop to pressure the Swiss Samurai. Hook once again forced to wait out the raging pressure of the American. Vicious clinch, the referee had to step in. What a fight guys, axe kick from Andy now, an evasion from Patrick and he throws an axe kick himself, another clinch, a bit of a pause and boom, left leg pierces the liver. Patrick tries to survive, but a reliable Swiss knee doesn't let down. It's not clear what makes the American squirm that badly on the canvas, the knee that landed to the skull or that scary kick straight to the liver. <laughs> Andy Hook, Rob Van Esdonk A blue-eyed samurai shared the ring with the Hollander Rob Van Esdonk right at the end of 1994 
And if you think that the UFC packs big arenas while the past K1 tournaments were held in small shabby basements, then check this out. The place pulsates with energy of excitement. The viewers who are ready to support their favorite fill the arena with cheers and applause. A light show and epic music created an incredible atmosphere of anticipation and commotion. The bell rings, start of the fight. At that moment, the atmosphere fills with tension and the fans' eyes are drawn to the ring. Every move, every striking technique, every block, all of that brings excitement and applause. Oh man, I got carried away with nostalgia, guys. Let's get to actual fighting. I can't help it. Let's watch another cool walkout of the Swiss athlete. It's simply amazing. Unfazed Andreas in the kimono walks out to smash heads with a very vibey 90s music. Bell, fight. During the entire round, fighters tirelessly clash back and forth, creating an incredibly tense atmosphere. Such furious attacks sometimes made the referee intervene to separate these two fired up kickboxers. The second round, a continuation of an uncompromising fight. Two powerful athletes kept on trying to take each other's souls, tearing the air with a storm of strikes. This rivalry didn't have room for restraint. Hooks, uppercuts, whipping high kicks and slicing axe kicks. All of that was put to use. But Andy Hook began to overpower his opponent and his punches and kicks started to reach the target more frequently. And a couple of minutes later, happened exactly what people were anticipating. A loud shot, boom! The Hollander's dead body, though still standing, lost its consciousness and went down face first. A countdown was purely nominal. But what a brutal and impressive knockout it was, goddammit. Watching this sequence a couple of times will inevitably make your testosterone level spike up to the roof. Andy Hook, Peter Kramer I don't think that any of you remember Peter Kramer, besides the old school kickboxing fans of course. And for those who don't know this big guy, I dare say that the guy really resembles Nikolai Veluev. Check it out yourself. Bell fight. Wild sight guys, a tall and brutal bold kicker in pink shorts against our hero. Spinning low kick, that's our sort. That's why we love Andreas. Unusual leg strikes. The fighters didn't force things, steadily punishing each other's bodies. And right out of the blue, bam, left hand behind the ear. Poor Peter, what were you trying to do, man? But Kramer has that spirit and doesn't lose hope to recover. But you can't fool the referee. Damn, in such moments, you always have mixed feelings. On one hand, we, the fans, are mesmerized with the beauty of Andy's shot. But on the other hand, seeing how poor Peter Kramer suffers, one gets the willies. Oh, well, guys, let's move on. Andy Hook, Bart Vale. March of 1996, birds are singing, Tom Cruise shines on the screen with his newly released Mission Impossible, Spring Romance 90s. And our beloved blue-eyed samurai entered the ring to clash with Bart Vale. Quite a caricature guy, I must say. Which country do you think Bart represents? Anyway guys, enough of taunts. Bell, fight, let's go. It's immediately evident that Andreas is a very agile athlete. Hook circles around his vis-a-vis -vis while Bart looks like a bit of a plain and clumsy fighter. Believe it or not, but when I watched this fight as a child, putting the tape in my father's video recorder, I needed only a minute to figure one thing out. The guy with long hair will go down 100%. Boom! My intuition did not let me down back then, but Vale happened to be tougher than I thought. And after the knockdown, not only did he get up, he began to turn it up. American grab and a sloppy but still powerful combination. Another pause, vicious punch with a rear hand. Knee to the body and level change. Bart, my man, I think you should start moving. What do you think? Vale presses Andreas to the ropes, but boom, boom, the samurai exploded with a combination to a standing American. 
TKO from Maestro Andy Hoog. Andy Hoog, Dwayne van der Mooy. K1 quarterfinals, 1996 guys. Both fighters channel unreal self-confidence and our buddy Andreas is Kuyokushinli calm. By the way guys, what about these fire shots in national style on Blue-Eyed Samurai? True vintage. With an announcement like Rolls of Thunder in the arena, the Swiss master of martial arts enters the ring. In his movement, one can see the grace and at the same time toughness that is cherished so much by the Japanese fans. The crowd of the rising sun was always demanding and tempted, but for these people, Andy was a true idol and a dear fighter and screw that Swiss passport and blue eyes. European Samurai pays homage to the Japanese crowd. Jesus, I won't stop talking about these fire shots of Andreas. What a wild and hardcore vintage. Perhaps your father was wearing these when he taught you how to land your first one-two in the garage. All while Van der Mooy just raised his hand and appeared to be quite phlegmatic, even too phlegmatic of a fighter. Let's see if the first impression of this tall athlete with a build of skinny Tyson Fury is deceiving. But let's get to the actual fighting. Bell, fight! Andreas Hook is light on his feet as always, while the Dutch really seem to be fighting the same way as he looks, slowly and hard-headedly. An unsuccessful front kick attempt from Andy and Van der Mooy starts to hammer the covered Swiss. Hook tries to return the favor and throws back to the ropes. What a testosterone explosion on the K1 canvas today, guys. Andreas grabs the Dutch brawler and lands a knee. Boom, left hook to the dome. Van der Mooy is not the timid type and instantly tries to get up. But the referee is not a fool man, it's a knockout. A signature celebration from the blue-eyed samurai and then Andy immediately shows respect to the fallen opponent. A true way of a warrior. Andy Hook, Ernesto Host. Does Ernesto Host need introduction? <laughs> Ernesto Host is a name that shook up the ring and made hearts beat faster. Kickboxing champion of the world in the legendary K1 organization two-time winner of the prestigious It's Showtime tournaments. His name symbolizes persistence, discipline, and unshakable will. This fighter conquered world arenas, beating such legends as Remy Bonyaski and Mike Zambides and a bunch of other best athletes in this bloody sport. There are not enough words to praise this fighter. What's better is to watch him share the ring with our blue-eyed samurai, and it's their second fight. The Dutch won the first one via decision. Fight day guys, let's go! A whipping low from Hook, but Andy almost got caught with a counter. Ernesto pressured Andy. Oh, one definitely wouldn't want to eat such a high kick. Boom, Andreas gets hit to the body. Host pressures his vis-a-vis -vis with physical strength, but Samurai doesn't break from that. Andy answers back. Bam, boom, one, two. Step back, left punch, and finish with a leg kick but it seemed only to enrage host. Boom, scary right, head grab, knee to the body, and hand work in the clinch. Host wants to break Andy, but bam, left punch. Right one, host gets wobbled. Andy is not easily scared either, though he is significantly smaller. Let's get to the second round. A favorite combination of hooks from Andreas, exchange of kicks, fighters want to hurt each other, Host game plan is clear. Way on a six feet tall guy with his big body and use the reach. Left hook. Grab and a knee. But Hook tries to pay back for every strike. A knee from Andy. Boom. Left hook from Hook. Clinch again. And Andreas turns it up. Long hand combination. But Ernesto flies forward and continues to add fuel to the fire. Fighters spend so much energy on this vicious work in the clinch, especially Andy. Middle kick to the Swiss body. Dodge, knee, clinch. Hook is not in a great spot, guys. Boom, shot to the body. 
axe kick to the Dutch's head. Ernesto enters the clinch again, lands another knee, then a low kick, but one, two, three, and he's stunned host, throws some more. What a monster you are and how did you recover so quickly Ernesto? Scary kick to the leg from host, another one. Oh, what a knee. How do you enjoy that Andy? But Andy is samurai for a reason. He doesn't break, goddammit. Third round. Blast from the right. Leg to the head. Hook circles around his opponent. Shot to the body. Now host explodes. Wild combination at the ropes. Oh boy. Ernesto goes at it. Another clinch. Exchange of blows and Andres eats a big shot. Misses with an axe kick. Eats a knee, but turns giant host. Oh my goodness, lands punches of his own. I don't understand how Andres pulls it off being inferior in height and physical strength. Host enters the clinch again. Another knee. And he lands a left hand. Adds a right one. What a vicious fight. Explosion from the Swiss. Hook peppers the Dutch's head with shots. What a fight. Men with capital M. Just warriors. But we are going to see another exciting round. Immediate brawl. Hook defends the low kick. Launches his signature axe kick. The Swiss also doesn't forget to keep the needed distance. Boom. Big right. Ernesto clinches again. Another brawl. Barrage of strikes to each other's head. Splashing testosterone at the front row. Hook's favorite combination of hooks. Clinch. Andreas grabs the head. And a knee to the dome. Boom, boom. Ernesto eats vicious hooks. But moves forward and shows, come on. Fighters start a war of attrition. Blue-eyed samurai is driven by a huge desire to avenge the loss to the Dutch. Last round, guys. I know that you don't want this fight to end, but it's the last round. Spinning kick from Karateka. Andy grabs the leg and lands with an intention to rip Ernesto's head off. Who grabs the opponent's leg? And guys begin to have a street-like brawl. Host sweeps Andy, but the latter immediately gets up and lets him know that he is not willing to lose this fight. Fighters put on a wild and roof-tearing brawl. Shots echo through the whole arena. The crowd buzzes. The energy is running out, but not the spirit. And the blue-eyed samurai takes the fight by a decision, avenging his bitter loss. Host is very upset, but Andy shows due respect. Beautiful guys, just beautiful. Andy Hook, Mike Bernardo. K1 Grand Prix Final guys, after a vicious and uncompromising battle with Ernesto Host, which he won via decision, Andreas Samurai Hug went after no less legendary Mike Bernardo. If you don't remember this warrior by the name, then maybe you remember his fights against such household names of the sport such as Mirko Krokop, Branko Sikatic, Peter Ertz and Francisco Filo. It's very sad that both of these legends are not with us anymore guys, so let's honor them by watching this amazing fight. Let's go! Bell. Fight. A couple of mutual low kicks to start things off. A big 1-2 from Hug, but it only made Mike angry. He continues to pressure Andreas, but not as actively as in the first seconds of the fight. It's clear that Bernardo figured that the Swiss had some bombs in his hands. Another 1-2 with a big left, but Mike shakes his head and tells Hug like, nah. A South African fighter can't find his distance. Mike rushes at the hero of our video, and he masterfully mixes things up, but habitually he gets pressed to the ropes. Vicious knees from Bernardo, but Hug is in the center of the ring once again. A sweeping low kick. Hope to God I will never get hit by one of these, or I'll get a guaranteed parking space for life. 
Scary kicks from the Swiss. Another inside leg kick. Painful, guys. I have no other words to describe it. Second round, and immediately, boom! Your poor legs, Mike. The South African covers up, but Hook also gets caught with a punch. Bernardo found courage and went forward. Bam! Another one to the leg. Do you often see low kick finishes? Me neither. Mike can't continue. He is unlikely to get up despite the countdown. But wait, Terminator Mike gets back up to his broken legs and a sadistic referee allows the fight to continue. Unbelievable, the crowd erupts. Now Andy starts to pressure. A minute ago he thought that he won, spinning kick to the leg. I will repeat the rhetorical question again with some corrections. Do you often see spinning low kick finishes? Me neither guys. Andreas Blue Eyed Samurai Hook becomes the K1 Grand Prix winner. There are two sides of every coin. Andy Hook deservedly swims in the glory and celebrates with his cornermen, while Bernardo grimaces in pain on the canvas. It's a sport guys, a vicious world of hardcore K1. But even in such a sport, there's always humanity and compassion. And we move on, diving deeper in the glorious career of the Swiss. Andy Hook, Stan Longinitas. Two intransigent fighters will collide in this battle. A tough tie, Stan Longinitis and Kyoto Shinkai master Andy Hook. The arena is ready to tremble from tension. This fight promises to be a true challenge for both athletes, where every strike will inflict enormous damage to the K1 fans' pleasure. We won't wait for too long, one has to see it. Bell, fight! A vicious low from Andy. We know what it can do to his opponents. Athletes wait and try to obtain information to slay the opponent. Low from Stan, big left hook and tie clinch. How about that? Athletes almost fall through the ropes, but it's more of a Longinides holding for too long. But you saw the power of this guy's fists, goddammit. Andres is good at countering the leg kicks. Hard kick from Andy and fighters begin to brawl. Nothing really happened after that moment and athletes went back to their corners, but experience always tells me that one should not yawn at such moments or you might miss a legendary highlight. Second round, signature axe kick from Andy. Oh, the brawl starts. Fighters are tired themselves from a tense silence and decide to put on an old school scrap in a ring. The referee even barely separates fired up athletes. Longinides clinches and simply falls over the ropes of Andreas. The case where a dirty clinch didn't do a favor to the initiator, Stan grimaces in pain. Looks like an injury. Andy and Ref start talking and figuring things out. It's most likely that Hook rightly shows that he didn't hold the opponent. This situation really enraged Stan and the Thai boxing representative rushed into the fight. Front kick from Longinides. Quick convergence from the Swiss. Wicked shots from Stan. Crazy exchange, but then a high kick and Hook breaks out. The crowd screams. Andreas gets in the pocket again. Powerful left straight. The tie fights back. Another high kick. Another convergence. Punch followed by leg. Boom! Stan gets on his knees. The tie hardly stands up but he is clearly from the generation where one doesn't give up the victory without a fight. Fighters in the center of the ring again. A big left from Hook and a deadly body drops down on the canvas. Out cold, no countdown. The fight is over. What a fight did these guys put on? While Stan tries to recover, we fly further to September of 1997. Andy Hook, Pierre Gwinnett. 
flamboyant Pierre got a chance to fight the K1 star in the first round of the Grand Prix. Of course, Andy was a huge favorite, but in such a vicious sport, even one shot can change the tide of the fight even for such a master as Andreas. So Gwinnett should not be written off. Bell, fight. Pierre rushes at Hook. Just look at this. Big knee and a clinch for his own safety. Hard right from Gwinnett. But Andy counters and the referee starts to count. But I think that it was more of a balance loss rather than a clean hit. But anyway, the ref knows better, also considering that Pierre doesn't argue with him at all. The referee resumes the fight. Vicious middle kick from Gwinnett. Low kick from Hook. Like a predator that hunts its prey, Andy presses his vis-a-vis -vis to the ropes. Good one-two from the Swiss. Pierre tries to clinch, lands a knee and immediately breaks out. Hook presses again and Pierre throws a sweeping shot. Yes, not as technically as we expected, but quite aggressively. Right strike from Pierre, a knee and a good separation. Pierre drags him into his game. Convergence from Andy, left to the dome. Gwinnett tries to grab his opponent again, but Andy runs after his vis-a-vis -vis like a father after a delinquent son. Pierre bounces off the ropes in wrestling style and lands a kick. What the hell is going on here? Big left hook from the Swiss. Andres begins to hammer poor Pierre and Gwinnett folds under a scary barrage of strikes, but quickly recovers. The guy has spirit. Axe kick from Pierre, but Hug is not willing to let the youngling go. Scrap at the ropes. Gwinnett covers up. High kick and Andres loses balance. Body kick from Pierre. Bam! Short right from Andy. Gwinnett goes down. No, it's over. Don't get up, Pierre. You don't need that. It's all over. <laughs> Andy Hook, Masaki Satake. All true fans of martial arts know good and well that the Japanese have a natural viciousness and unshakable determination. But when this viciousness gets face to face with Gaijin, the foreigner who grew up in the same national discipline, the tension reaches its peak. This clash of cultures and skills promises to be an epic rivalry, touching the souls of everybody who follows the world of martial arts. Two remarkable personalities in the world of Kyokushin Kai Karate are preparing to share the K1 arena where their great fight is going to take place. Not only glory and recognition will be at stake in this clash, but also the essence of the national fighting traditions. Intensity and pressure will grow by every minute of the fight. The crowd will soak in every moment with bated breath. Enough of words guys, let's watch the fight. As professional fighters should, athletes are not rushing into a reckless brawl in the very first seconds and now begins the stage of a slow shootout and feeling out process. But Andy got really tired of it and he goes after its opponent and throws a big low kick, left to the chin. But the Japanese is not backing up. Pause again and a wait out from both sides. Taunting his vis-a-vis -a, -vis a bit, Hook throws a leg and then a hand. It's clear that these strikes are impactful even through the block. Andreas works as the first number and Masaki clearly wants to work with counters. Hard low from Hook, steps back, grabs Satake's leg, but the referee intervenes. That's the end of the first round. Second round starts. Bell. The fighters don't force things right up until this moment. Boom. Hammer from the rear hand. Dirty brawling begins. All limbs are put to use. This is the most vivid moment in the second round, so let's not lose the pace. Rewind to round number three. These guys throw hands like lightweights. Andy clearly doesn't want to let this fight go any longer and tries to finish his vis-a-vis. -vis. But the Japanese are tough guys and everybody in the world knows that. Boom! Masaki puts Hook down. Andres wants to return the favor and throws legs at Satake's face. One, two from Andreas. The Japanese retreats. High kick lands on Masaki's head. He desperately tries to stop the Swiss's pressure. 
brawling again and fighters dive into a scrap at the ropes. What a spectacle, what a round. Let's get right to the next one. The referee starts the fourth round. Boom, high kick to the block, sweeping left from Andreas. The Japanese throws a kick to Hoog's head, but the Swiss counters, puts his opponent down and adds another punch to Masaki's dome. The Japanese movement shows that he is slowing down and that means Andy needs to step on the gas. Spin, but Sataki catches him. Left shot thrust to Hoog's head and he is forced to cover up. But boom! Andrea's legs are flying as they should today. What a round! Comes the final round and what does that mean? Right guys, there will be sparks and lightning. Axe kick from Andy. The crowd waits for the show. Another high kick from Andreas. Leg to the body. The Japanese rushes forward but falls down. Brawl at the ropes again. Hard shots to Sataki's head. Left straight. Knee to the belly. Fighters went at it and nobody's willing to back down. Starts the battle of spirits. Hook throws a leg to the head followed by a hand but the Japanese simply ate it. Bell. Andreas Hook wins by unanimous decision. The title of the best karateka in K1 is successfully defended. Andy Hook, Mike Labrie. 1998 was quite a wild year for Mr. Hook. Why wild exactly? Because during that period, Andy had eight fights, four finishes, and only one loss against Peter Ertz in the finale. Back then, Peter avenged one of his losses to Andreas, and there were two of them. At the Grand Prix semi-finals 1997 and K1 Fight Night 1998. Let's dive into the great time of prime blue-eyed samurai. The record of Andreas' opponents is impressive. Check this out, guys. 46 fights, 45 victories, 1 loss and 39 knockouts, goddammit. A true machine made for this sport and it only makes it more interesting. Can the Swiss warrior beat this Terminator? Let's see. Fight as always started slowly and fighters were measuring each other out. Damn, Mike has a very tough build. Axe kick. The crowd asked and the crowd received. Gracias, Andreas. Labrie throws a couple of testing punches, but a samurai is too agile. Vicious low from Hoog. It appears that Andreas' speed will be a problem for Mike. The Swiss counters his vis-a-vis -vis lunge and puts the body down. Another axe kick, but misses. Labrie presses our Andy to the ropes with sweeping kicks to minimize his mobility and begins to hammer Hoog's block with his fists. But Andreas is slick and escapes the situation, letting him know that the Swiss wolf depends mainly on his legs. Signature spinning kick to the leg. Another one. The crowd is inspired and clearly roots for Mr. Hoog. Now Andy presses his vis-a-vis -vis and wants to put a rendezvous at the ropes. Sharp left kick. What is that? Labrie starts to limp and our Swiss shark feels the blood. Faint and level change. Bam! High kick. Andy separates and breaks in with a signature axe kick. Samurai went into a frenzy mode and simply played with Stern Mike. Hope he doesn't get hit with a counter. Another low kick. Axe kick misses. A combination of Swiss fists and powerful strike to the same leg. Mike falls down. Oh my god. Hoog doesn't even celebrate as if he is a bit disappointed. And to be fair, I also expected a bit more from Labrie. The referee counts down, but Mike shakes his head and lets the ref know like, it's enough for me. And what will we do without mutual respect, guys? Giants of the sport exchanging kind words. And once again, we hop on our ride and move further in the career of Andreas Hoog. Andy Hook, Mark Russell. After a rather easy win over Mike Labrie, Hook shared the K1 ring with Mark Russell. The fight was back and forth. Mark decently countered Andreas, pressuring him on the forward movement. 
Sometimes fighters try to find out whose balls are bigger in pocket exchanges at close range. And by the way, you might have noticed that Hook was finally given somebody of his size. Hallelujah, we move on. As soon as Andreas figured out how to work against Mark, he began to land on Russell's head more frequently and efficiently. Boom, boom, boom. And finished the combination with a low kick. Mark wants to continue pressuring, but bam, left cross. Uppercut, and Mark goes down on the canvas. His face says like, what was that? Russell is a bit confused, but still wants to continue, and Hook immediately tries to develop his success. But Mark is not a taxi driver either, so he tries to throw back. But Andy found his wild rhythm, dropped one, two. A couple more punches, and Mark is wobbling, but survives to the next round. Very intriguing fight, guys. Second round. Hook decides not to force things and turns the pace down a little bit, but still continues to press his opponent. Axe kick catches Mark and now begins a swiss storm of strikes to Russell's dome. High kick right on the spot, boom to the body, one, two, three to the block. What a durable guy you are, Mike. But the trouble came from an unexpected place. Boom, a terrifying low kick shatters Russell's leg. He tries to recover, but no, a brutal finish from the Kyoko Shinkai Karate Master. Andy Hook, Masaki Miyamoto. And here is a common picture for a career of the blue-eyed samurai. 100 kilogram kicker, 190 centimeters tall against not the biggest, but a very spirited Swiss man. Do you want to know what happened? Then let's rewatch this great fight that was held at the K1 tournament with the sound name Kamikaze. Bell, fight, and an immediate low kick. It can be very dangerous. Be careful, Mr. Miyamoto. Axe kick attempt, but Masaki returns the favor and lands to the leg himself. The Japanese also knows what's what, and he has speed in his hands. Miyamoto throws a great combination, though to the block. I bet it was still impactful, and he doesn't stop. Boom, boom, boom. Sweeping and vicious. But our dear Andy is cool as always. Boom, the Swiss almost rips the head off. Boom, adds a body kick. Start of exchange, Hook slowly begins to step on the gas. The pace appeared to slow down, but BAM! Back fist straight to Miyamoto's skull. Insane! The Japanese giant falls and the ref begins to count, but he would have likely had his citizenship taken away if he didn't get up. Fighters from a country of the rising sun have a lot of courage, but Andy doesn't want to let him go. Dirty exchange at the ropes. Now Masaki lands to the Swiss's dome, and Andreas has to retreat. What a fight, guys! Miyamoto throws his low kick, but instantly receives a payback. Take a seat, man! The ref allows to continue. The Japanese catches a whipping left to the head. It's clear that he is stunned. Boom! Another back fist. Oh, Jesus! What a highlight did Mr. Hook deliver today! Let's count together with the ref. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Nine, the end. Miyamoto is not happy with the stoppage, but the referee knows better. You got really wobbled. And as always, nothing but respect. That's the way of a true samurai. Andy Hook, Ray Sefo. Are there any kickboxing fans who are not aware who Sefo is? Born in 1971 in Oakland, New Zealand, Ray is a legend in the world of martial arts. He became known thanks to his impressive sports career and fights in prestigious promotions, K1 and Glory. The greatness of his technique and charisma in the ring made him one of the most recognizable and respectful fighters. Seven-time world champion in different organizations, Ray Sefo left a meaningful mark in kickboxing history. It's a pleasure to watch this rock share the cage with the Swiss Samurai. What would be the outcome? 
Let's move to the K1 tournament in 1999. Ready? Let's go! Andy's legendary walkout with a super legendary soundtrack. Goosebumps. Kimono belt a cold and calculated stare. It's something else. Ray also looks very focused and fired up for a wild brawl. The fighters are very similar in terms of build. Two tough guys with steel uh, characters. Let's get straight into it. First round, bell, fight, let's go. Both fighters in super cool shorts meet in the center of the ring. Ray's the first one to break the silence. Sefo threatens Andreas with shots and finish the combo with a low kick. Axe kick for the luck in Andy's tradition. A sweeping kick from Hook. But Sefo smiles, letting him know that he is not Mike Labrie. The New Zealander is light on his feet and lands to the Samurai's leg himself. It's very interesting who is going to get the upper hand, Samurai or Maori. Athletes throwing legs like crazy. Hook starts to press his vis-a-vis -vis to the ropes. Back fist from the Swiss, axe kick to the back of the head. It's hardcore, guys. But Ray lays Andreas down. But Andy jumps back up. What a trick. The Swiss doesn't let his opponent doubt his spirit. On such a cool note, ends the first three minutes. Straight to the second round while we are warmed up, guys. Because the fighters come out to the second round with an intention to slay each other. Jab. Low, a sweeping uppercut from Sefo misses, and a counter from the Samurai. Warriors are clearly tired out of the feeling out process in the first round. Convergence, clinch, a knee from Mr. Hook, a trip from Ray. Andreas goes down. And he is not really happy with this fall, which means that his vengeance is not too far away. Precise left to the New Zealander's chin. Another one from Hook to the same spot. What was that? What was that? That's what Ray's face says to Andreas. Right hand fake, left to the dome, and another one to keep him alert. Boom! Maori got wobbled, and Hook immediately starts to hammer Sefo. The New Zealander falls down on the canvas, but Ray would rather die than give victory that easily to the Swiss athlete. But Andy felt the blood, and that means that shark goes after its prey. Boom! Who counters low with his cross? Right hand to the head, Ray retreats, left to the forehead. Maori eats a barrage of shots. Sefo goes down. It's all over. Enough. The referee stops the fight. What a scrap, guys. Amazing. And as always, nothing but honor and dignity. It's not the only clash between these two giants of the sport. In 1999, the New Zealander and the Samurai met at the K1 canvas once again. The fight was very exciting, but unfortunately, we couldn't find it in good quality for you, dear viewers. But still, let's take a look at how their second fight went down. Can we do otherwise? Come on, guys, it's Hook and Sefo. Let's give it a pass. Contrary to the first battle, fighters began to actually fight already in the first round. Imposing defense from Sefo, pretentiously low hanging hands, right punch and a kick to the leg. But the New Zealander immediately eats two hooks with his head and Ray has to retreat to the ropes. While the blue eyed samurai starts to hammer his vis a vis with a barrage of strikes, ooh, fighters took a break to recover. Sefo is indeed a diehard. But boom, back fist from Mr. Hook. After a while, Ray unloads on Andreas' head himself. Our samurai's a bit wobbled. The first round ends with a signature axe kick from Hook. Nothing really happens in the second one except for occasional exchanges of low kicks. But the third one starts off very vigorously. Left from a distance, right to the block. And he covers up. Bam, uppercut of all uppercuts. I thought Hoog's head was going to rip off. One, two, three from the New Zealander. That's when the real scrap starts. Fighters are not willing to back down. Wild exchange. But Sefo wisely enters clinch to cool down the fired up Hoog. And he starts to pressure Sefo. Axe kick kisses Sefo's forehead. 
one, two, three, to a standing target at the ropes. Oh wow, Maori showboats. The Japanese crowd clearly loves it, but the last time it resulted in Sefo getting knocked down. I thought that the fight was gradually setting down until another boom happened. Ray grandstands once again. Samurai begins to blast the New Zealander's head. What a combination! But Ray defiantly puts his hands down and says, I'm not feeling it, Hoog. Try again. And that's the end of the round. Now let's watch the next three minutes. What a brawl, guys. What a shame. In the very beginning of the round, Hook throws a strike to the steel balls of the New Zealander. Very bad. But Sefo gets up like a real man. I hope that this kick didn't affect Ray, but it seems like it's really the case. Sefo doesn't have a firm ground under his legs, and Hook begins to batter the New Zealander. <laughs> Mary gets himself together and starts to throw bombs of his own. One, two, three with hands and a low. But Hook returns the favor to Sefo. Once again, we're not watching a fight but a scrap on the ring. <laughs> Left cross. One, two, three to the head. The New Zealander warrior rots him for a brawl. Oh man, overhand from Maori. Uppercut, left hook. Come here, says Sefo. Hook accepts the call. Left to the block, low kick, and the New Zealander can't endure any more. Sefo is in a very bad spot. Really bad, guys. What is this man doing? Limping and grimacing, he calls Andreas to fight and lets him know that he's not done. Oh my goodness, the Maori keeps putting in work on Andy. But Hoog is not willing to spare Ray. High kick to the dome. Left hook to the same spot. Sefo's body gives up, but the spirit is still intact. Where are you looking, ref? Stop the fight! Limping New Zealander goes to the center of the ring and a sadistic referee allows the fight to continue. Maybe he wanted to give Ray the chance to make it to the end, but the cornerman of the New Zealander made the right decision and threw in the towel. Blue-eyed samurai shows respect to Sefo. Beautiful, just beautiful, guys. But unfortunately, we have to wrap it up. When we look at the rich career of legendary Andy Hoog, it's like we see a picturesque journey in the world of martial arts unfold before our eyes. With every strike, with every fight, he left a remarkable legacy in the history of this sophisticated sport. Andy was entering the ring not only as a fighter, but also as a symbol of persistence, endurance and true gentleman. When remembering his fights, we transition to the times of the greatest clashes that gave the world an uncompromising drama and incredible mastery. He knew the art of striking, but also the art of respect to his opponents. His commitment in the ring inspired not only the fans, but fellow athletes as well. However, in 2000, the world lost this great fighter. Andy Hook passed away, leaving a void in the hearts of martial arts fans. His death was a huge loss for this industry, but his legacy lives on in the memory of those who ever saw him in action. Not only did Andy become a fighter, but a symbol of strength, kindness and a true passion to live. Let his fights always remind us that true victories are not exclusively in the ring, but also within us, in our spirit and character. Um, why do you still fight in the ring? Why? Because I'm born to fight. <laughs> but what is the other reason for you to do that? To make the people happy. Goodbye legend, you are forever in our hearts. If you like the video, hit the like button and share it with your friends and leave a comment below to show respect to this legend. We will miss you and your mastery, Andy. Rest in peace.